Just like you prosper when you sell out to the other side, you get a pop, right? But then you find out that you're, you don't get another pop until you do something bad to someone else. Then by doing bad things, you get more pops, and that's how people become celebrities. Unfortunately, whether it's in any field, whatever. Or at the very least, you've got to be one of us and connected to the family of Lucifer, the family of the world, the world family, which all the churches are, no problem, all the religions are, so that you can prosper, so that you can... Um, and the, the, the objection is, you mean you'd, you'd, you'd be objecting of that, of putting food on your table, and I'd say, who told you Lucifer was your provider? Who told you Satan was your provider? Where did you get this cockamamie idea in your head? Why did you get that idea? But now, anyone that threatens that idea, and especially when you're in institutions, they will target you for death. They will target you to be a targeted individual if you disagree in bowing down to their God. Which means, let me translate that, it means bowing down to them and taking your place in the slave, hierarchical, luciferic order of the world that's not spoken and doesn't exist in order to not be targeted, in order to not be harassed, in order to um, be able to have a seat at the table, be able to be somebody, get a Nobel Prize, be you know, get a chance to compete on the, on, the, on the field. You won't get that unless you're part of their family. If you're part of their family, you're anathema to God. But then again, they provide church for you so you feel like you are saved. But it's all a lie. Hallelujah. There's the truth. There it is. Ugly as it may be to some of you, that's the truth. A lot of you who are, say, you're targeted individuals who are leftists, you think somehow it's the Bush uh, dynasty that's, and their secret police that's targeting you. No. It's a spiritual battle, you idiot. And if you can't see that by now, I don't, maybe there's no hope for you. You want to keep blaming one side or another and playing Hegelian dialectics with yourself, you might as well just go ahead and conscript yourself into slavery for the rest of your life because you're already a slave, but you're saying you're targeted because the other side is targeting you. Because you have the wrong political idea or something. That's not why people are targeted. They're targeted for supernatural, spiritual, you know, higher dimensional reasons. And these other dimensions are the ones that rule over the earth. They're principalities of wickedness in high places, and they rule over man. And they demand conformity to that which is the world. And if people are not connected to the world or disconnected, they try to say, well, those are like Jared Lee Loeffner or people that shoot up places. They're not connected. Well, the last one we had in Colorado, um, uh, Holmes, the Batman killer, uh, he was connected. Very well, thank you very much. So, kind of blows their theory. But, uh, you know, I told you they would start feeding on themselves, didn't I? I told you they'll start shooting each other in the end because, you know, um, the population of lambs, i.e. not connected, but true lambs are really those connected to Jesus Christ. He comes into your life. He changes you. He lives in you as the Holy Spirit. He gives you sound mind. He gives you the ability to speak about these ideas in a very cogent way, in a way that, that petty arguments can't put them down, can't stop it. You can't stop the truth. Those of you who've written me who want the truth, you can't stop the truth. I'm just a vessel for the truth. I am not a god in myself. Anything that I get that's good to say, to speak, comes from him, the creator who made heaven and earth and everything in it. He, his spirit, speaks truth. If, if I was left to my own devices, I would speak opinion only. And everything I've spoken here today is certainly not opinion, but objective. Even though you may say it's opinion, you would be incorrect. 
My own opinion, if left to my own devices, I would probably just focus on conspiracy theory. I would focus on, uh, if it was just left to my opinion, it would be conspiracy theory. It would be uh, um, my own idea of what's fair, what's right and wrong, rather than taking it from the word of God. It would be my own ideas of what I thought was right was wrong. Um, you know, I'd probably go with the trends as well. I'd be duped by uh, communism, socialism, all that stuff. I'd be cool. I'd probably do very well as a, a music producer in terms of, uh, you know, mixing the big acts and whatnot. And I'd have my space, my slot. So long as I never thought anything outside the box, they would leave me alone. So what are you going to do? I remember this one celebrity came to look at a house I had in L.A. to sell. And, you know, you've heard talk about climate change coming back up, uh, carbon taxes, all that. By the time they get done with everything, they've already taxed the Internet to an extensive, uh, the, the cell phones you may have noticed. That's why I'm kind of, you know, I can almost give my cell phone up and go to Skype and even go to a smaller like iPad and just use that as both a pad and a phone using Skype because... The other is just uh, exorbitant due to being taxed. And eventually, I predict a global depression. And, and he's predicted the same thing, Brother Thomas. I mean, he predicted everything in real time as it was happening. And it happened just exactly structured point by point by point by point, event by event by event by event, right down the line, unfettered, by the way, no pushback as he predicted. He'd been looking at this a long time. He knew what to call it. Everyone else said he was nuts for saying the word communist and all that. He knew what to call it. He knew, he, he knew how to predict it. And eventually it becomes, as he's prepared for, and one of his songs is Violence in the Suburbs. And, um, you know, basically that's it. In other words, there's a takeover. You know, the whole idea of gang stalking, we dealt with that. Gang stalking basically comes from, you know, traditionally out of uh, top-down controlled dictatorships like Stasi Germany, East Germany, okay? Um, gang stalking. In other words, they would play games where they all become your friends, but they're all really spying on you. I mean, those kind of things uh, were perfected also by the KGB. Uh, it's being rolled out here because it's very important for neighbors to spy on neighbors and then when there's someone undesirable in the neighborhood, they must push them out by creating false rumors about them, number one. Uh, number two, they have to, uh, you know, electronically harass them, send microwaves to them, infiltrate their homes, put cameras up, microphones, be able to, to track and harass because usually if they're the wrong politically, they're wrong spirit, there's some reason they're, they're not with the group or conformed or they're singled out. And then the logical conclusion is they get sick, they get hurt. In a couple of cases, I know people who have died from kind of seemingly unrelated things, but in the process of being gang stalked and harassed by official people, and these people are, are sanctioned by the powers that be to do that harassing, some of them trained to be organizers of gang stalking. But the, Brother Thomas was saying this would eventually, and, and you know, we've had it you know, in different places. People have taken video of how they've been followed to Walmart and followed in. And I've, I've known, I had a situation once where I believe people followed me into like a CVS, you know, and they were reporting back via cell phone, okay, he's coming out, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I largely ignored it. You know, I largely ignored it until it became cameras in the house and break-ins and things like that, and then things moved around. And then eventually I said, you know what, I better leave California. This is not going too well. So I've had all, those, all that harassment for a long time, and basically it was because um, I was anathema to Satan. I mean, I know that sounds almost... Um, glib to say it like that but <laughs> at the end of the day there's no other conclusion you know I was 
but I wasn't even aware because I didn't, I had not dedicated myself to the Lord or anything like that. Hadn't dedicated myself to a politic. All I was trying to do was get along and, but the, uh, but not loud. And I was like, hey, why am I, why are you singling me out? Why, why, you know, and then later you come to realize, because if you're not one of them, it doesn't matter what your philosophy is, what your politics are, whether you tout Jesus or not. It, all that matters to them is, that's not one of us, let's get him. So they're, usually they recruit criminal types, low lowlifes, you know, and they get trained in sort of a quasi-police work, and, and then they go out and they do what they do, reporting back uh, everything to higher-ups who then, you know, use the information to do whatever. I, I mean, you know, you all, all of you who have been in this situation, you realize that. Um, but the, the trouble you've had is, and then, uh, yes, and then there's the community of people who have been mind-controlled, implanted, uh, tracked, and that's something even more profound when there's implants involved. It's like the whole alien abduction thing is a part of it. You, if you look at alien abduction, basically, alien abduction is surveillance, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, alien abduction is surveillance. It's tracking, isn't it? And, well, with the chip in the book of Revelation speaks about, in Revelation 13, talks about tracking every single individual globally with real-time data updates 24-7 of the entire human population. And that's the, the thing they're salivating over right now. That's in reach. Let me ask you a question. Will you take the chip? Let's say you're going to church and the church says, nope, that's not the mark of the beast. We can tell you because we're your teachers and we're teaching you right out of the Bible. And if they want to have a chip to make sure that you've got your health insurance and uh, make sure that you're, you know, they know who you are when you're going to shop and whatnot. We don't want terrorists. Um, go ahead and take the chip because it's not the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation. You won't lose your salvation. Will you believe your pastor when he says that? Because they're all being trained to say that. Will you, will you agree to take the chip if your pastor tells you to? Because I know you don't listen to me when I told you the, the church's big monitoring device. <laughs> Talk about gang stalkers. That's, that's like a lot of the popular. Most of the people in church, most all pastors are mind control. They're just mind control servants of... Um, coming out of their schools. You can't get to be a pastor unless you're vetted by the seminary. And then they assign you to whatever church. So that's right there, you're compromised. You know, so you never get to see a real pastor because, and I'm not saying they don't do good things, and, but the ministering to people is a bad thing because what are they ministering? They're bringing people over. They're bringing people in the church over to have home visits and Bible study. And what they're doing is they're doing a top-down control on the population and real-time data updates to the powers that be on a daily basis. And that can even go further and more profound when you bring the chip into it. So the churches will be, in my view, touting the chip as not part of the book of Revelation. Um, and it's the right thing to do to make sure we don't have terrorists, because terrorists wouldn't have a chip. Thus, if you don't have a chip, I guess you're a terrorist. And that's kind of the way things are. It's pretty scary. You know, it really is. I mean, when you think about it. It's the worst futuristic sci-fi novels. It's Philip K. Dick on steroids. Remember uh, Total Recall, Philip K. Dick, when, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of tyranny that the... Uh, that the people were living under on Mars, you know, and as being like a metaphor for a future of here. Or Red Dawn, a movie coming out later on, you know, of this takeover and then the people trying to fight back. In the case of Red Dawn, they don't win in the end. They're just little spread out militias here and there and groups here and there who are trying to rebel and fight back. But 
basically, um, or did they win? I can't, I'm not sure if they won or not. If it had a happy Hollywood ending. But let me put it this way. As this stuff creeps in when they make their move, um, there will be nobody able to fight back because the Bible says, and I'm going to go by my prophecy here in the book, nobody can make war with a beast. See, that's what you're dealing with. That's why I think the storm came. That's why the, the strange election results were so overwhelmingly uh, you know, decisive in the sense that it was over you know, before it even got started. No recount, no nothing. It's uh, no one can make war with the beast, and nobody, no matter what you think of this guy in the White House, nobody can defeat him because he's been allowed or given a, given a protection by God to fulfill his time. In other words, this is the cup of iniquity being filled up. This is a portion for the time of the end. The, you may pray against it, but if you read the Bible, honestly, you'll see this has to come in before the Lord returns. So the cup of iniquity will go full. The time of the beast's reign will be implacable. No one can make war with a beast. No one can stop this. No one can turn it around. That's why I've said what I said about the United States, to, because I myself have to wean off any idea of, you know, patriotism as laudable as that can be at times is no place for it now because it's, you know, there's no need to be unpatriotic or patriotic. It's now a wash because it's irrelevant at this point. You know, um, the pomp and circumstance that the, seeing the enemy say the Pledge of Allegiance, it's only a show to get your confidence. It's hard for me to watch that. I don't really care to see that, whether it's at ball games or anything else. It is, you know.